While we're on the subject of lighting devices, a package via DHL has arrived from, well, actually this is from Hong Kong, interestingly. I thought it was going to be from Shenzhen. So we did not yet open this, and look at that. Should have brought an opening device to get into this box. Very well packaged. Thank you, DHL, for a timely delivery. And I'll tell you what, you do the honors, little brother. You do the honors. Uh, this has been sent from Olight, uh, specifically from the lovely Lydia. I want to say thank you very much for making arrangements for us to be able to test and evaluate some of this gear. The device in question is, uh, is a question to me right now. Uh, this is a bit of a surprise, so I'm not sure what it is that we're getting, except that it obviously is marked a light. The box inside is Olight, and this is the Olight X7R Marauder. 12,000 lumens of light being thrown in the direction where it's necessary. So, package is completely sealed. We're going to get around to opening this uh, here in just a moment. Okay, so for break-in purposes, let's go ahead and uh, please do the honors of, of getting this open. Just what I'm gleaning from the box I, and general knowledge about some of the products that have been available recently, I think that this X7 R Marauder has been out for at least six months, perhaps more than that. On the box, it indicates How are we going to do this? Yeah, I'm going to play know. tricks on us today. Yeah, nothing like a, oh. doing a, a, a magical act. Okay, so you, they're using the same, uh, really, actually, the, the packaging is nice on this. You can almost use it for storage if you've got to tuck it away in the safe or what have you, or if you're going to turn it into a, what's referred to as a safe queen. According to the box, it looks like on a full charge, we may have a total uh, time capacity of 30 days. I'm not sure if that means storage time or not. The throw is supposed to be up to 380 meters. Waterproof to IPX7. You know a little bit about that. Uh, go ahead. If you had come. Uh, the IPX7, I believe, is going to be just waterproof, dustproof, sandproof, like your regular stuff. Uh, I believe the highest rating you can have is IPX8. Um, and so IPX7 for a handheld flashlight is going to be pretty fantastic. I mean, you're not really, it's not a dive light, so you're not going to need the, the highest rating. So Right. And, uh, but otherwise, uh, what type of depth do you think you could bring this to? Oh, I have no, I've, that's, it's been a long time. You since could definitely go arm's length. Oh, most, most definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. Now the LED is an XHP 70. We have an asterisk three. Frankly, I don't know what that means. Uh, we've got to mean times three for how big this light is. Times three possible. Oh, you know what? That probably means that there are three LEDs in this light. Yeah. So again, we're, we're, we're functioning off of a level of ignorance and, uh, yeah, you can, run with that as much as you want. But we are running from a level of ignorance on this particular device. So with that said, I, it sounds like, I think you're right, we've got three LEDs in the head of this light or un, under the bezel. It looks like it runs off of four 18650 batteries, uh, lithium ion rechargeable battery, which is built in. So you might be able to get an extra battery as a, as a backup, but uh, not, not absolutely positive. So we've got some more specifications on the rear. Uh, looks like we've got uh, a low of three, or on turbos, turbo S. So we've got two levels of turbo. Let's come down to the lowest setting. We'll go from right to left, which is kind of the Asian way of riding anyhow. Uh, on the night light setting, it's 10 lumens, and apparently it will run constantly for 30 days. So that's kind of impressive. On the low setting of 500 lumens, we can get an uh, estimated time of 14 hours. And of course, this is according to Olight, the manufacturer. On the medium setting of 1,000 lumens, we can get a run time of six hours. On the high setting of 3,000 lumens, bring that up a little easier so it can be compared, we have a run time of two hours, 10 minutes. On turbo setting, between 7,000 to 3,000 lumens, that's probably based upon the type of battery, although frankly, I'm not sure what that means. We've got anywhere between 12 minutes to 110 minutes. And on Turbo S, which would be 12,000 
to 3,000 lumens, or maybe the high is 12,000 lumens, we've got uh, 120 minutes, three at 120 minutes. And again, that may be because you're using all three of the LED lights, however, I'm not sure. Uh, there are some additional specifications here. No need to go into that. It looks like it's a Cree XHP70, uh, three of those in this. And of course, we've got some of the redundant specifications around the front of the box. So opening this light up, please do the honors. Well, they have a nice pull string here to pop it out so you don't <laughs> drop it on the way out. The Holy whole box smokes. is like a nice debate, set, uh, debate setting. Wow. So your initial uh, impressions on this light, what, on the weight, does it feel like it has the battery installed? It, uh, it feels like it does have the battery installed. It's nice in the hand, but because of the width, it seems like it's a very reasonable thing to grab and hold on to. It kind of reminds me of like a barbell. Okay. Now, looks like we've got some instructions here, which are obviously important because they've got it on the inside lid. So before we use it, it says remove the protective film from the lens, unlock the flashlight that has been locked under the factory mode, and to unlock, you hold the switch for over two seconds until the light is on. So please go ahead and do the, wait, wait don't turn oh, it on yet, pull off the protective, there we go protective coating off. Very good. And press the activation button for two seconds. Oh, yep. There we've, we go. We have ignition. We have ignition on the three LEDs. Let's go ahead and just rotate this around very quickly. Now, it looks like that's picking up on the camera. The LEDs actually have four, it looks like there's four little separate LEDs in each pod. I'm probably using the wrong term for that. So uh, the, the techies can chew me up all they want. I'm gonna turn this off and we can see the LEDs on the inside, the way that they're laid into place. I like that they seem to be, there's actually a pattern. There's a, a flat section of the LED facing inward on all three of them. Yeah. There also seems to be a sensor here. I'm not sure about that. We'll get into that a little bit later. But uh, you're right, the, uh, the weight is like a very small uh, very small dumbbell and looks like we have it's probably going to be the opening or the uh, a locking piece for this but the uh, the finish is well done it's smooth smooth and slightly slippery to the touch was that your experience yeah uh, good grip though, based on the finger grooves in the milling that they did on the outside of the body. Yeah, and the um, milling is really high quality. I mean, it's it's nice and and I think it's what's called flat milling, where the outside edge is is actually flat. It's not pointed or otherwise uh, tapered. And on top of that, just like the other lights we've experienced thus far, um, when I was turning this over in my hand, I was looking at it for inconsistencies in the anodization, and at this point in time, it seems very e uniform and even. Um, with no weird grooves, no weird uh, splotches, no um, patches that don't seem to have bonded as well as others. So again, just a real high quality piece of piece of metal. Yeah, the anno has been done very, very, very nicely and, and professional. The rear of the of the rear cap has that same consistent texture. There's some light crenellation here. And I think that these vents along here, which you can pick up, there, I think that that will help with cooling the uh, the head of the of the flashlight. Let's go ahead and we'll set this here for just a moment and see what else the light comes with. Obviously, instructions. We'll get into that. A belt holster, nylon material. It's pretty nice. We have USB and the USB plug for the light itself, and the plug. Of course, there's a small lanyard. Little hand, hand lanyard. Yeah. Nothing, nothing to uh, get super excited about. Wouldn't want to try and suspend myself from a, <laughs> from a crane or anything with this, but still something that would definitely hold the light itself. And of course, we have the plug. And the plug may be adaptable to other types. I think that Olight has done that in the past, where if you're going to be traveling, you can get a different uh, style plug for Asia or for Europe or wherever you may happen to travel to. So we'll set that aside for now. Set aside the holster. 
charging cable. And again, the exterior of this light is really well done. Uh, we've not read the instructions, but okay, I'm just like goofing around with it. It looks like this is the lanyard, hole. lanyard uh, key to stuff the lanyard in, and it's nice that it goes flush. And um, we've got a charging port, did you say? Yeah, it looks like yeah, uh, the just, instructions just here right on, the, on, the, on the thing show a, a charging cable and then a side of his arrow. Okay. So I think with this, you're going to push down. Yep, there it goes. And, uh, and there it, it is. It opens up the, the charging port. It slid out from underneath that little lightning bolt. You see, you push down and you twist, and there's there's your charging port right there. Try so that that's, Turn it this way just a bit. There you go, like that. Now, so you, you see, here's the cover. Yeah. So that's going to help with that IPX rating. That's going to keep everything nice and sealed and secure. Um, and it, when it's closed, you have a little cover for it. And then when you need it, just a little quarter twist and there it is. Nice touch on this cover is that, go ahead and close it again. There you go, and at that angle, perfect, right? Like that. You can see that the, the cover appears to have a, a nice blue anode to it, unless that just is a plastic material. Yeah. More on that later. But uh, so that's, that's interesting. It's very accessible. You could put the light uh, bezel down and just plug it in or even have it uh, on its side and charge it. The, and again, we're just weighing this right now. We have not read the instructions or the instruction manual. So quite frankly, other than what we've read off of the box, uh, this is completely winging it. So yeah, it, it's like a full click to open up that charging port. And I was going to see if this does not appear to unscrew, and I'm not going to try to overly force it, but this section here feels like it may. And again, I don't want to try and force anything, so I'm not going to at this time. Um, wondering if the lanyard key has anything to do with that. Nope, I don't think so. So again, without forcing anything on this light, let's look at the, the bezel. The bezel has a nice uh, blue anodization, which I think is going to be uniform for most of the Olight series. Almost all of the Olights I've seen, I believe, have that, that blue anno bezel. The bezel is flat, it's not crenellated, so it's going to sit flat on top of a surface if you put a bezel down. Um, in spite of the smooth texture of the surface of the body of this, this light, the the uh, finger grooves and the, the fullers or the fluting that is along here makes it for an excellent hold. So this is similar to like fluting a barrel on a firearm. Um, all in all, I'd say, you know, for what it is and for its intended purpose, it's, it's handheld, it's lightweight, comes with, uh, with a lanyard, and of course you could rotate your own lanyard into this as you may want. But, uh, you know, frankly, just pressing on this rear cap piece a bit, that's not giving in at all. So, and again, we're going to be testing and evaluating this light. So, um, you know, for all those safe queen shriekers that were out there about putting a titanium pin against the beautiful body of this uh, small port cap, you know, rest assured, it'll probably be exposed to a lot more abuse than that. So again, this is the X7R Marauder by Olight. Uh, really well done, and we'll see how this uh, functions in the future. Did you find anything? As I noticed, you look at the manual. You know, Did you find out what this small I, piece they, is here? In there, it mentions something about a motion sensor. Now, what that's going to do and what that's going to look like, I'm not sure. So I think we might have to have the battery fully charged before we can start playing with some of these functions. Um, but more to come. Right. Okay. Yeah, interesting. So mo possibly a motion sensor. Um, the other thing is the inside of the bezel. It's a what's called referred to as an orange peel, which is roughened, which will help with dissipating some of the throw. So this will not necessarily be a real, well, I don't know. I think it says it's touted as having 380, me 380 meters as a, as a throw distance, so that's, that's pretty significant. So, more on this light later. Any other comments? Not currently. I'm Not looking currently. forward to playing with it and see what it can do. Yeah, well, just as, a, as an aside, the belt holster has hook and loop for a closure. It's got a belt loop here, another uh, D-ring here, a plastic D-ring, which is probably 
going to be consistent with most of the other products. It's not open at the back, so not much of a chance of it passing through. In other words, pressure being pulled on it, and it, you'd have to break this D-ring by all appearances. I did also read, though, in the manual, and just as we're looking at this, you'll notice when you pop it open that there's a, a blue stitch line here on the back of this holster. Um, and if you take a, a thread pick and you pick that out, this is designed to give this an extra 70 millimeters of extension for a belt loop. So if you're running a belt, that this looks like it's probably inch and a half. Um, if you're running a belt that's a little bit wider, you can pick that out and you'll have, a, you'll have all this extra space for a bigger size belt. Interesting catch there, brother. Interesting catch. So the blue stitching here, if you just use a needle or, or the point of your knife and you pick that out, it'll extend the belt width. Correct. Interesting. Good catch. Good catch. And, you know, as just a basic come along, you know, included with the light, not a, not a bad product. This is definitely not the highest quality uh, uh, webbing gear or, you know, uh, pouches that you might use. You might use something that's already uh, built into your, to your carrier or whatever you're, you're usually running. But it's nice that they added this and, uh, and, it, and it gives you a little something to, a little something, something to, to uh, help protect your light and carry it. And yeah, okay, just to be on the side, it does fit. Beautiful. Okay, thank you much.